Downtown Evansville, site of the NCAA Division II National Championships. Jay Ziklotti and the Flagler Saints have won 16 straight. Ryan Hawkins, Trevor Hudgens have won two of the last three national championships. And that is the matchup for our second semifinal, the three seed Flagler and the two seed Northwest Missouri States. Bracket me. Oh, what a finish in game one. A three-pointer at the buzzer and West Texas A&M awaits the winner of this one. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz. Welcome back to Evansville along with Pete Gillen. What a thrilling first game. And, and here in the second game, I know it's a two versus a three, but Flagler really feels like a Cinderella here. No question, Rich. They've had 12 straight losing seasons. And Northwest Missouri State is one of the powers of D2, won the national title in 2017 and 2019. Now, coaches love efficiency. And Northwest Missouri State's offense is the most efficient offense going. I mean, they score points with just about every possession they've got. And it's easy to be efficient when you've got the player of the year in the country and a guy who could have been the player year in the country. Unbelievable. Ryan Hawkins and Trevin Hunches is a great one-two combination. Ryan Hawkins is a tremendous three-point shooter, can score inside or outside. He's a fabulous, fabulous player. He's a guy that can take over a game at any time. He controls the paint offensively and defensively. He can put it on the deck. He can share the basketball. He's really a fabulous player. You said, Rich, he could have been player of the country. Trevor Hudgens, forget about him. If I had him, I'd still be coaching. A tremendous player, a point guard. He can run the pick and roll. He really can slash to the basket. He can get to the rim, finish with either hand. Makes great decisions on the break. Really a fabulous player. And they'll be facing the Flagler Saints, St. Augustine, Florida, home of Flagler. And like you said, they have 12 consecutive losing seasons before this season. They've won 16 in a row, and they've got a terrific player to watch in Jasek Lottie. Jasek Lottie is a fabulous player, one of the leading scorers in the country. He can score from all three levels. He can knock down to three. He can get in the range, mid-range game. He can do a lot of great things. These are the losing seasons for Flagler. And you can see this year they've turned around and gone 18 and two. And here is Jay Ziklotti. Lottie is a fabulous player, one of the best scorers in the country, with almost 25 points a game. He can take over a game at any time. He's really, really very quick. He's strong. He's a guy, he steps up in big moments. He can get to the rim and finish. He's really a, a, a tremendous player, very unselfish. He can shoot, he can pass the ball, put it on the deck. He creates for himself and his teammates. Second national semifinal of the night, Division II in Evansville. Flagler and Northwest Missouri State. Final moments, first semifinal. West Texas A&M down two. Clock running down. And Zach Toussaint's three at the buzzer. The game winner. And the Buffs of West Texas A&M beat Lincoln Memorial. And they are in the championship game on Saturday. They'll meet the winner of this game. All right, Pete Gillen, let's dig into this. Flagler College, the Saints, we told you about Lottie. Chris Metzger is the reason he's that they are here. He hit two big free throws in the Elite Eight game to get him here. And Northwest Missouri State, what else do you need to know? The most efficient offense in the country, two player of the year candidates. One is a player of the year. And a, a really good backcourt mate in Diego Bernard, who's averaging 12 points, six rebounds, and four assists a game. And two very good coaches. First, Chad Warner in his fourth year at Flagler. And he's the guy that's turned the program around after 12 consecutive losing seasons this year. They've run off 16 straight wins taken down a couple of Division I teams on the way. And Ben McCollum has been there and done that. They've won two of the last three Division II NCAA titles. He is a three-time Division II national coach 
of the year. What is the style of play, Pete Gillen, that we're going to see here from Flagler and Northwest Missouri State? Well, Northwest Missouri State really pushes it up and down, really fast, quick shooting, very talented. Two unbelievable scorers they have in Trevor Hudgens, a national player of the year, and Ryan Hawkins. And the Saints, they'll pick their spots. They'll play, you know, medium pace. They'll run when they can, and they have a, a fabulous guard, uh, Yasek uh, Lottie, who's a, a, one of the top scorers in the country. So uh, they are Cinderella, Flagler, but you can't count them out. They came back. They find a way to win, Rich. So see what happens this evening. They are up-tempo. They score 80 a game. And they have the first possession. Henderson drives, knocked away, and picked off. Luke Waters with the loose ball and here comes Northwest Missouri State. This is Bernard, the junior out of St. Joseph's, Missouri, the transfer from Lafayette. And right away, on the board. It's too easy, can't give up a layup to start the game. Diego Bernard opens the scoring. Body to the baseline, this is Metzger. Soft jump hook, missed it. Trevor Hudgens, National Player of the Year. Hawkins. Bernard again, corner kick. And a turnover. Nice pass, alley -oop. Nice finish by Diego Bernard from St. Joseph, Missouri. Both teams are really good shooting teams. Northwest Missouri is elite. And Flagler's not bad at all. 48% from the field, 37 from distance. Flagler want to take their time now. Don't be trying to score in the first five, six seconds of the shot clock or maybe the end. They don't have the firepower of Northwest Missouri. Jalen Barr gets in. Wes Dreamer with the block for the Bearcats. Three. Tremendous three-point shooter. Let's go inside, outside. Had 32 in the Elite Eight game yesterday. Flagler won a tight one, 70 to 69 over Truman State. They're trailing most of the game, Rich, right? We were here watching it on streaming. Great game. Late clock three from Derek Ellis Jr. And a 5 nothing start for Northwest Missouri State. And they score from everywhere. In all five positions on the court, they can score from Rich. It doesn't have to be just two, two big guys. Waters! And a timeout. Right away from Flagler. And boy, do they need it. Northwest Missouri State. Defending national champs. They've won two of the last three titles. Off to a 7-0 start. Bearcats, Maryvale, Missouri. Enrollment of 7,100. Gary Gaetti, the great Minnesota twin. Please meet and greet Bobby the Bearcats. A dominant Division II football program, and now basketball has followed. Metzger, the senior, the leader of the team. Not a great offensive player, but there's the little things that screens, rebounds, mm -hmm. assists. Foul on Hudgens, who's been the conference player of the year the last two years. Flagler's so got to do, try to get in foul trouble some of the the big guns with Northwest Missouri State. There we go. Sweet jumper, and that's Lottie, the transfer from Arkansas Little Rock, averaging 25 a game. Seventh in the nation in scoring. Has to have a monster game for Flagler have a chance to upset this powerhouse, Northwest Missouri State. Bernard steps through. Metzger cleans it up. In transition, Lottie. Jason Lottie. He can score. And there's no question about that. And he makes, according to his coach, Chad Warren, he makes the right play and the right decision as well. 
That's a three, and it's clean from Luke Waters. Nice pick and pop. Two guys went with the basketball, the dribbler. Left him alone. Waters buried it. Metzger in the blocks. Muscles in. It's a block. And Metzger will get to the free throw line. Please welcome Jacek Lottie. If you haven't seen this guy, you're missing something. Out of Arvada, Colorado, 25 a game. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. All right, let's meet the Saints. Flagler is out of St. Augustine, Florida. They call it the ancient city. 1968 is when Flagler College was founded. South Regional Champions. They play in the Peach Belt Conference. That sounds like fun. And they are the Saints, and their mascot is a lion, which but, but keep you off guard, which, which probably deserves a little more research, <laughs> actually. And there's a the free throw right there from Chris Metzger, and it was Metzger who put them here into the semifinals with two free throws last night. Down one, he hit both of them to give them the win. And the story was he was a 39% free throw shooter going into those two last night. Amazing. I, I, we were watching the game, Rich, in our separate rooms, and uh, I never thought he'd make two. I thought he'd make one, hopefully. But he's the leader. He's got courage. He's got guts. And tremendous shot. And a turnover. Steal there by Spencer Bain. And they turn it right back over. Here's the end of that game and the big moments for Flagler facing Truman. Metzger gets fouled, and again, they're down one. He said that his coach, in the timeout, looked him in the eye and said, I love you regardless if you make them or miss them. I will love, I love you now, and I'll love you afterwards. Great. And he went out and hit both free throws. Great coaching. Be positive with his player. And not all about the results, so tremendous win for Flagler and uh, but Chad Warner did a wonderful job with his team. And 12 straight losing seasons, Rich. I mean, if I lost 12 straight losing seasons or part of it, I'd jump in the Schuylkill River in Philly. That's I know right. you're a big fan of that river. I am, That's, and it's one of your favorite stops <laughs> in Philadelphia. Yeah, when I was in Philadelphia, they tried to throw me in a couple of times, but I was assistant with Rowley. We didn't get a couple key recruits, and I was a half step from the Skooks. You got to stay out of the Skooks. And you got to stay out of that uh, circle if you want to draw a charge. And they did. Nice job. Good job. Planted it in. Jalen Barr. Yep. Ready to step in. Waters with the charge. Big key now. Flagler got to stay close early in the game to show that hey, they can have a chance. Because I'm sure a lot of people say, hey, you have no chance. This is two out of the last three years, national champ. You're not going to beat Northwest Missouri State. Chase Fiddler has checked in. This is Fiddler, a three, and he hits it. He is playing his best basketball at the end of this season and a 42% shooter from distance. One point game. Hudgens hunting. Waters just hit a three. Late clock, Diego Bernard. Ball fake, Hawkins short on the three. Oh, a hard foul. Yep. And Hawkins going for the ball, knows he made a mistake. Great defense by Flagler. Kept in front of their man. Did an excellent job with that. They contested the shot. Boxed out really well. Push on the break, foul. <clears throat> Hawkins who has played just about every sport imaginable. He's played football and soccer in high school. Lottie's driving and a reach and he's fouled. And Hawkins turns around to find out. It's his foul. So he gets two fouls in a short amount of time. 
That's a tough call. Yep. Did he reach before the bump? Lottie on the inbound. Missed the layup. Hawkins cleans it. Great footwork. He just couldn't finish the deal. Lottie's a transfer from Arkansas Little Rock. You measure offensive efficiency by the amount of points you get per possession. And Northwest Missouri State is the most efficient in the country. This is Dreamers 3. He buries it. They average, Coach, 1.12 points per possession. That's best in Division 2. Lottie with an air ball. The best in Division 1 is Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Yep. Bulldogs average just below them at 1.087. Great efficiency. You can take care of the ball, you make your shots, you don't turn it over. You get a certain amount of three points, so it's a system where they gauge everything. Ken Palm was one of the big proponents of that many years ago. Hawkins, nice feed. Dreamer on a cut. Yeah, they take good shots, Northwest Missouri. They don't take many bad shots. Oh, Ellis. I hate that. And a turnover, and against an efficient offense, you just can't do that. No. Not necessarily if you hide a back pass. Do it if you have to do it, you cut off, but not to try to show your extra skills. Guards who can penetrate and bigs who can shoot the three. That's what Ben McCollum likes at Northwest Missouri State. Gotta push your flag, gotta try to score before the defense gets set. Lottie against Hutchins. Oh, goodness. Another turnover. The mountain is here. Live sports, breaking news, and a mountain of entertainment. Paramount Plus now streaming. Evansville, Indiana, great basketball town, site of the NCAA Division II championships. And Northwest Missouri State, the two seed, Flagler, the three seed, and the teams, once they reach the Elite Eight, are reseeded. So this is their seeding as they entered the Elite Eight, both winners last night. Hawkins is tough. <laughs> you leave him alone at the three, get back in. He's got a good mid-range game. He's going from all over the court. And he's playing with two fouls. Well, flag, I'm going right at him, Rich. Got to get him off the court. It would be a big plus for the Saints. Fiddler off the bench. It's another bucket. And he looks like he's feeling it. Try to get some turnovers now, get some deflections. If your defense gets your offense going. Hudgens was fouled out high. Don't worry about it. Foul travel, we don't worry about it. We're Northwest Missouri State. Just get the ball to the big hawk. Hawk is flying high in Evansville. Two seed Northwest Missouri State, a 17 11 lead in this Division II semifinal. Bearcats, nice alley oop. First play of the game, they don't guard a screener. They share the basketball, they can knock it down inside, outside. And we see Luke Waters with a, a three. Every starter has one assist so far, Rich. Uh, that's the culture. Share the basketball, play hard. A lot of freedom on offense, play hard defensively. Seven of 11 from the field. And a six point lead over Flagler. And, you know, Flagler, this is their first ever appearance in the national semifinals. As we've noted, Northwest Missouri State has been a regular of late. Waters driving, another offensive foul. <clears throat> and it was Tyler Collier who drew it. Yep. I agree with you, Ben. What's going on? He's driving, moving his feet. It was close. 
And for Waters, it's his second personal. Yep. And remember, Hawkins already has two personal. Could have gone either way, which the column didn't like it. Second thing, it could have been good call, but it was close. Good. The block charge is the toughest call in the game. It, it's bang bang like that. Either way, it could have gone. At every level. Yep. Lottie trying to get loose. Bernard is hounding him. This is Lottie. 41% from distance. Boy, this guy off the bench. Chase Fiddler has drained two contested threes and in a jumper. He's got eight to lead the Saints. Big help. 5-9 stop from Huntsville, Alabama. Big guy. Another three. Luke Waters. Raining threes here. And Evan Waters two of two from distance. He's got eight points. And a foul on the rebound. Jalen Barr got tangled up. And it's his foul. I don't know. I don't know about that. They're fighting. I don't know if he... I don't think he hit him that hard to fall down. Flop action. Hawkins on the bench. Hudgens takes over. Dreamer, lengthy, and skilled, and persistent. Collier with the rebound. Lottie in transition. Going hard and stolen by Diego Bernard. The best on ball defender for Northwest Missouri State. Tough as nails. Remember, Hawkins not on the floor right now. But Waters is. And that is a block. And a bucket. Go up the screen. Again, that was... Yeah, yeah, he's in the restricted arc, Rich, so good call. Got a foot in there. Metzger back in for Flagler. Derek Ellis Jr. back in as well. And if you're Northwest Missouri State, and you've got this, this comfortable first half lead, you can afford to leave Ryan Hawkins on the bench with two fouls, as long as you keep this cushion. Definitely. Some coaches automatically, Rich, <coughs> sit them two fouls, you sit the rest of the half. I used to play guys, depending on the player, you got to know your players. You got to have trust. Trust, and they got to be smart. And you're right. A player like Hawkins is so valuable. It's a good decision by Ben McCollum to rest him. Hudgens. Such a dynamic player. 20 a game, four and a half assists. Kick back out. Waters the miss. And Barr has the rebound. Probably going to need some points. Ellis beats the post. Metzger against Waters. Packing in the defense. Pack line D. Lottie misses the jumper. Man can absolutely coach in his 12th year. Oh, Hudgens loose. Clever. Scores when he has to, but he doesn't have to because Northwest Missouri State has so many weapons around him. He doesn't have to score. They've got 25 points. Those are his first two. Yep. Good depth, good talent, all five positions. Lager doesn't have quite that margin of error. Got good players, but not as much offensive firepower. Bar, and he walks. Right now, Northwest Missouri State is rolling. They won two of the last three national titles, and they got the player of the year in the country in Trevor Hudgens.
night, 8 Eastern, CBS Sports Network has a championship game, Division II women's basketball, as Drury of Missouri takes on Lubbock Christian of Texas. This is the national semifinals for the men. That is Ryan Hawkins. Back in with two fouls. Right, goes over 20 points a game. Coach McCollum wants to put the medal to the, on the gas pedal, try to blow up this lead. West Texas A&M, the Buffaloes, or the Buffs as they go by, awaits the winner of this one on Saturday on CBS 12 Eastern. If you didn't see the thrilling finish, you missed it. Oh, a three. Hawkins checks in and bombs out. A deep three. What a shooter. Six, seven. Jalen Barr answers. Those pick and rolls, which I would switch that. When he sets a screen, I would switch that. We're picking a pop, but two guys are going with the dribbler, and Hawkins is wide open, plenty of time. I switch it. Hudgens, pick, there's the pop. Hawkins, back cut. Good ball movement. They find a corner three, no. They'll decline it. Other corner. <laughs> this is just like yep. a clinic. Hudgens a three. My goodness. How many touches on that possession? Poetic justice. The most, awesome. the most efficient offense in all of college basketball, every level, is Northwest Missouri State. Bring on Gonzaga. <laughs> They're second. <laughs> a 14-2 run. That's a tough move. And Lottie goes to the line. Talk about unselfish. <clears throat> Penetrate, kick to the top, the wing, the corner, shot fake, penetration. Who wants it? Plenty of time. Skip pass. Here we go. Hudgens says, oh, I'll take it. Not enough. How about that? National player of the year. Great offense by the Bearcats. That wasn't just swing, swing. That was like oh. swing, swing, swing. Diagonal, put a poop, put a poop. Put a pop. You know, Jay Zaglotti at the line is a really exciting player. The guy that he reminds me of is the uh, that terrific player who's been at Pepperdine for Lorenzo Romar the last few years, Colby Ross, yeah. who is, you know, very similar in build. Just had an incredible career as far as points and assists. Great player. Yep. We had his game once. I know you did a bunch of their games, Rich, in the West Coast. Uh, when they played uh, Cal Berkeley, he was great. That game was. Hawkins, pull up. Mid-range game. So he can knock the three down, score in the post, mid-range. He can do it all. Well, you're, you're not kidding. Over 2,000 points. He's the all-time leader in rebounding for the Bearcats. He'll get on the floor when you need him. Tremendous player. Because of their efficiency offensively, falling behind them is not a wise thing to do. Open again. and Hawkins and an air ball shot clocks down look at Hawkins can't give them second and third possessions too talented Bernard drives kicks dreamer no and no whistle play on another offensive rebound another three Hawkins Ryan Hawkins Shots on that last trip down the court. Fiddler misses. And all of a sudden, this on a 19 2 run has become a 20 point game. Just too talented. You score from all over. Catch. I don't know if he was shooting, but he was fouled. How 
impressive is this? Brian Hawkins, 22 a game from inside and outside. AT&T at the half, Brent and John will preview the Sweet 16 matchups for the Division I men's tournament in the East and the West regions. That's coming up on AT&T at the half. Rich Waltz along with Pete Gillen and our CBS Sports production crew here in Evansville. Certainly south of Indianapolis, but still a great basketball area. Free throw is up and good from Isaiah Jackson. Now that guy has been terrific in this one. Hawkins, 13 points and four rebounds already. The lead has grown. Three and a half minutes left, first half. Fiddler hit his first three shots, has missed his last two. Right now, that's your offense. Passing around, Fiddler taking a bomb. Lottie's got to try to step up, try to whittle his lead a little bit. And Lottie, just two of five for four points. Metzger with the rebound. Lottie looking for some transition points. Wow, that was a, uh, a wild ride by Derek Ellis to hold on to the basketball. And you're struggling, you to get more ball movement and body movement. Move the defense, then drive. Try to get to the foul line. Nice back door cut. Brian Hawkins, in the Elite Eight, he had 32. Tonight, 13. The number that impresses me, though, is 20. He won 20 letters in high school. Hey. Four for soccer, four for basketball, five for baseball, three for cross country, two for track, and two for football. Unbelievable. Great hand-eye coordination, what a shooter. Tremendous play. The rumor is, is that the pitching coach for Northwest Missouri State's baseball team had Hawkins throwing this week, and he was throwing mid-80s, and the Coach was asked, hey, if uh, once this basketball thing is done, could he help you? And he said he'd be our number three starter. <laughs> so you never know. Some people get whatever they do. Play knock hockey, be good at that. Whatever it takes, he'd be good at. He's fortunate, but he's, sure he's a good student, class young man. So whatever he touches turns to gold. What a tremendous play. He topped out at 86 this set. And that was, he hadn't picked up the baseball in a while. Dreamer misses a three. And Flagler, in desperate need of some made shots, hangs on to the possession. Lottie is their star, and he's been hounded. That's a foul. Yeah. You can't bust through a screen like that. Nope. That was Isaiah Jackson. I love the effort, but yeah, no, you can't do that. <clears throat> Got to give Lottie some more space. Get her off just going one on one rather than always ball screen. Uh, Barr was the screen setter, and he'll take the free throw. One red flag last night for the Saints. Even though they won over Truman State, they were out rebounded by 21 in that game. Yeah. They helped themselves with just four turnovers. But the problem tonight is they already have nine. Yeah. Right at the defense by Northwest Missouri State. That ends a 21-2 run by Northwest Missouri State. Hudgens, oh, it rolls out. Another example, very unselfish offense. Metzger lost it. And scooping it up and dropping it in is Jalen Barr. Thought he got hit on that one too, Rich. That's a charge. Yep. Good defense by the Saints. 
<laughs> and Barr was absolutely flattened in the lane. Waters landed on him. Had a pick and pop. They throw it to the screener. He goes in. Way to step in front. Nice job taking a charge. Ooh. Not only did he take the hit, but he was underneath on the landing. And that's the third personal on Luke Waters. One of the starting bigs for Northwest Missouri State. Lottie on a, a cut, made the catch. And the Saints will hold the possession. That's about the only issue that the Bearcats have right now. Yep. Scoring very easily and playing good D. Well, he can't do it by himself. And you, you saw the reaction of Ben McCollum, the head coach. Yep. He went nuts. D he didn't get a team. Diego Bernard has been defending Lottie throughout and he's done a terrific job. He is the conference defensive player of the year. Yeah. And so he sees this not only, not a challenge, but as a, a real opportunity. Yep. And we talked to Coach McCollum uh, today, right? He said, hey, he's really a bulldog, right? He's really tough as nails and he's our best perimeter defender. Lottie, 74%. Free throw shooter. Okay. Lottie goes up. Diego Bernard. Had to push his hip a little bit. It wasn't a, a major foul, for sure. Yeah, not a, a lot of contact, but three free throws. Flagler will take it. Bernard is just a junior. Bernard's value for this team is he a great defender, but he's also a scorer. In fact, that in three NCAA tournament games, he'd missed one shot. He's missed three shots tonight as Hudgens misses that three. Lottie has met with a double out high. Trying to split it. Does. Nice pass. He gives it up for a bucket from Jalen Barr. Chipping away. Still a long way to go, but now they're getting back into contention. Got to be Lottie. Rich, he's got to be the guy that's got to be the catalyst to help get him going. To score or create assists for his teammates. Final 20 seconds, first half, second NCAA Division II semifinal. And a foul on Lottie. He had one to give, so that was his sixth. It was the first person on Lottie. Chad Warner, the head coach of Flagler, trying to keep the, the spirits up. And the foul essentially resets the shot clock and allows, actually erases the shot clock. 2-3 zone by Flagler. Hudgens. to a brilliant first half for Northwest Missouri State. Diego Bernard is six foot. Goes up and throw it home. What an athlete. The most efficient offense in the country, any division. The Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State. Play a zone, but the problem with a zone is you don't have definite screen out responsibilities. Missed a shot, nobody screens up and up, up, up and away. Six foot lightning. Yeah, even point guards can get up. Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Look at him, he's pumped. Terrific player. Defending national champs. Yep. They've won two of the last three. And their lead is 40 to 24 at the half. We'll send you to AT&T at the half. After these messages, you're watching the Division II men's basketball semifinal.
on CBS Sports Network. Second semifinal Division II National Championships in Evansville at the Ford Center at Northwest Missouri State. A 40 to 24 lead over Flagler. West Texas A&M on CBS on Saturday awaits the winner of this one. More on that first game in a moment. Rich Waltz along with Pete Gillen. We've been billing the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State as the most efficient basketball team in the country. Any division. They sure showed it in the first half. No question. They really shared the basketball. Had nine assists, seven for 16 from three-point land, 44%. So they did it all offensively. All right, now to that first game of the night. We said, hey, if you haven't seen the ending, you need to check it out. We figured we'd give you an opportunity. Here are the final seconds in this dramatic first semifinal. No timeouts left. Murray to inbound. This is Grant driving. Grant missed it. Ball's loose. It's tipped. That's for the win. Got it. He hit it to Salt. Wow. Unbelievable. First three hit all game, Rich. Down two. Hits the three. And, and what we didn't show you, and we should tell you, there was a replay review with about six seconds left, and in the review, they decided who touched the ball to go out of bounds, but the officials noticed that .9 seconds had escaped from the clock, so they put .9 seconds back on the clock. When he released the ball, .9 seconds on the clock. Unbelievable. My old boss in Notre Dame, Digger Phelps, said it's a 40-minute game. Not 39 minutes and 58 seconds and 59 seconds, 40 minutes. And those last seconds, as you mentioned, Rich, was a difference. And Toussaint was 0 for 4, 0 for life from 3. But he buried the last one, and uh, uh, that's history. And heartbreak for Lincoln Memorial, uh, for sure. In this one, it's all Bearcats. Ryan Hawkins. This guy's good. I mean, really good. And so are the Bearcats. First half stats of the second semifinal in Northwest Missouri State, the two seed with a 16 point halftime lead over the three seed Flagler, the Saints out of St. Augustine, Florida. Now we've been telling you about these two for the Bearcats, Trevor Hudgens, the guard, and Ryan Hawkins, the 6'7 senior. Tremendous player, <clears throat> hit shots in the lane from downtown. He's got unbelievable range, puts on a deck, jump stop, little pump fake. A skilled player. Shot chart, please. See that? In the paint, they're on in the paint. Nine for 16. Knocking it down from outside. And that and red six for nine. And on the wings, not bad. So the red is the hot pot. Blue is the cold. But uh, And not many shots outside of the paint inside the three-point strike. Nope. Right? It's either a three or it's in the uh, paint. Yep. Now, I, I guess the, the challenge for Chad Warner, the head coach at Flagler, how do you get going, especially Jacek Lottie, who has been hounded by Diego Bernard the entire first half, was two of five and had six points. Yeah. Well, you got to set him some screens, give him some space, try to score in transition a little bit. But down 16, which is not, uh, you know, impossible. You know, we saw uh, that uh, coming back in the first game, right? We saw that uh, they came back, West Texas A&M, Rich, they came back from way down and, and won at the buzzer. So the big mountain to climb, but they can do it. But it starts with the defense now, for sure, by Flagler. Can get Lottie some space and get him some touches. First possession, Bearcats. Hutchins. This is West Dreamer. Missed the three. Body up the floor. Marcus Henderson. He misses a three. It's amazing how far players today shoot from Rich. When I was coaching a number of years ago, they shot from 22, 23 feet. Now it's 26, 27. Bombs away. They do that because the pros shoot so deep. They emulate the pros. Well, I think everybody in this 
game, whether it's college or pros, has stretched their distance yep. over the last uh, eight to ten years. Definitely. And the, the Steph Curry effect in the college game certainly has something to do with it. They see those guys pull up and drop from 26 to 28. Well, great point. And that's a high percentage shot for some of those guys. Yep. Uh, you're right. What the pros do, the young college guys and the high school guys try to emulate. As a college coach who had success at, at three major stops, back cut, beautiful, yep. Diego Bernard. If you were to step back in and coach right now, you would have to coach differently, wouldn't you, with a no. three-point shot? No question. You got to shoot threes. And uh, I would tell them, hey, life is short, shoot threes. That's the part of our philosophy. <laughs> Get it up there. I like that. Yeah. No, don't want to waste any time. <laughs> Three and D. A lot of coaches say, hey, play good D when it give you freedom. I think that's a big word with coaches today. Freedom on offense. You should put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> I could have put on life is short, shoot threes. I could have put on final five. When I was at Providence, we got to the final five and got beat by Arizona in the uh, you know, in the Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. but if I was a marketer like you, Rich, I would have put final five shirts and might have made a couple of nickels. <laughs> The offensive rebounding is really clobbering Flagler as well. Yeah. Controlling the boards. Eight, the board. Eight offensive rebounds oh. for the Bearcats. And yep. I got lucky on that one. Height one missed there. 20 point game. It was a 16 point lead at the half. Lottie. And now you've got Isaiah Jackson on him. Metzger, that's a difficult yeah. shot. That spinning left-handed hook. Yeah. Fade away. Yeah. And the rebounding disparity. We talked about Flagler, minus 21 on the boards in a win in the Elite Eight last night. You can't live like that. No. Zero offensive rebound. Nada. So, they miss a shot, they'll get a second chance. Well, it says Missouri State's got seven, so they're getting second and third opportunity. Great coach, Adolph Rupp from the University of Kentucky, won four national titles. He said, the team that controls the board controls the game, and most of the time, that is accurate. I think he would add, were he coaching today? Yep. The, the team that hits three. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Hawkins. That's Hawkins. And his fine night continues. 15 points now on 6 of 11 shooting, 5 rebounds. He's too big and strong, too physical for the Flagler players. Lottie trying to do a little too much. Uh, well, still, all by himself, got to the rim and finishes. Isaiah Jackson was all over. Good defense, but better offense by Lottie. This is a big hole, and again, against a team that is the most efficient in the country, any division. Lottie putting on the deck. Jackson right on him, through his hand. In traffic, Bernard try to block it. Heck of a shot by Lottie. It's an offensive foul, and it's on Lottie. Been a big emphasis the last three or four years, moving the screen. You can't move anything. You can't twitch. You can't hitch. Yep. Coach is trying to say, hey, you got to stay still. Lottie usually has the screens set for him. Right. He's not used to right, set many screens. You're right, Rich. Great hustle, another offensive rebound. Hawkins a find. Bernard kicks back. Northwest Missouri State. Dominating right now. 20-point lead, second half, national semifinal. My shooting guard, Dan Dickow, will be in the... Uh,
studio. So they give you the inside on the Gonzaga Bulldog. Yep. Done a wonderful job working with you, Rich, all year. Good part of the season. This is the, the Gonzaga of Division II, I think we're watching here. Yeah. Northwest Missouri State so efficient offensively. Flagler gets a bucket. Marcus Henderson in transition. Northwest Missouri State's won eight straight conference titles. It's a juggernaut, Division Two, two national championships in 2017 and 19. Last year, they would have been right in the mix. That's right for doing it again before the, the COVID canceled everything. Five minutes in. Little dunk pass from Hawkins to the cutter, Jackson. It is a clinic tonight. Good persistence there by Jalen Barr, but he couldn't get it to drop. That was the first offensive rebound of the night for Flagler. Yeah. Northwest Missouri is just too big and physical and talented. How did they lose two games? Exactly. Coach should be fine. <laughs> Dreamer. And the passing tonight has been exquisite. But that Hawkins, great pass. Jackson, nice finish. Team so unselfish. They share the basketball, they don't worry about who gets the credit. Just win, baby. Late Al Davis would love this team. Just win. <laughs> 12 assists on 19 buckets. Yep. That's that bad sweep. Jason Lottie. Trying to do all he can to put points on the board. An 18-point deficit, though, for the uh, Flagler College Saints. Hudgens hanging out the three-point line. Hawkins gets to the rim. <clears throat> They're too comfortable, Rich. They got to change, do something different. Play a little zone. I don't know if they have that in their arsenal. We saw him play the other day. They didn't zone, but uh, he's carving them up like a porterhouse steak. Bernard. Ooh. Ooh. We're good, we're good. Hard foul. Yep. Lawrence Slim, the sophomore out of Amsterdam, with a foul. Yep. That get the steal. Bernard's a great athlete. Got to throw it down. Yep. Just a hard foul. And I take that back. It was Chase Fiddler with the foul. Slim was on the scene. But did not commit the foul. Look at Bernard's line. He's in triple double territory. He's got he just needs a point. Got that. Needs a rebound and needs four assists. A great job, but biggest thing for, for me is the job he did early in the game on Lottie. They made phenomenal defensively against one of the leading scorers in the country. 25 points a game at six and a half. Fiddler misses. Hawkins has the rebound. Hawkins now with seven rebounds to go with 17 points. Hawkins a three and Bernard will pick up an assist on that or at least he should and he's three assists away now and one rebound away from a triple double pick and pop has been there all night The lead now 25, and a three misses badly from Ellis. Jackson.
Lottie, step back, it's a three. Hawkins has the rebound. <clears throat> 11 and a half minutes left, and a dominant performance by the defending national champ, Northwest Missouri State. Obviously, no tournament last year. They won it in 2019, and they won it in 2017. That's a steal. Oh, Ellis steps Robert. through. Walker blocks it. You heard about Hawkins and Hudgens. Don't forget about Diego Bernard. He defends, he scores, he wheels, he deals. Tremendous player from St. Joseph, Missouri. Big key to their great team. Diego Bernard, mark it down. Coach Pete Gillen, this is a offensive clinic from the Bearcats. Amazing. 13 assists, they share the basketball, so unselfish. They don't care who scores, they move without the ball, Bernard with the layup, they swing it. Hawkins is deadly from downtown, the big fella. Cut, move without the ball, Jackson with the layup on the finish. These guys are amazing. Shoot 54% from the field. We got to give this guy a lot of love, Coach. I mean, they've been unbelievable. Ben McCollum, fabulous coach, Northwest Missouri State. Well, two national titles we mentioned before. Could be three on Saturday night. A bucket for Flagler. For Northwest Missouri State and Ben McCollum, this is his ninth trip to the NCAA tournament in Division II. His record in the NCAA tournament right now, 21 and 5. That's amazing. Play against the best team in the country. With two national titles. And he could go to 22 and 5 and get to the championship game again if they can hold this sizable lead. First, it, it didn't, look, it didn't happen overnight. And he played there. He played at Northwest Missouri State on an Elite Eight team, but they were not good his first two years. Losing seasons, 22 and 31, first two years, but he's persistent. He did it still with the program. He built, he built the culture, and success begets more success very often. He's done an unbelievable job. He deserves tons of credit. He's got unselfish players. You know, it's a great, great sports program. We talked about that, that run of national football titles, six of them from 98 through 16. Well, basketball is dominant right now. Great job. He relates so well with the players, you know, talking to you know the people at Northwest Missouri State. He knows their songs, he knows their <laughs> culture. He, he, he's got more moves than a can of worms dancing. Suppose he's a pretty good dancer after a big win. But he relates to them, and he, he treats them with respect. Like they're his family, and they love him, and he loves them. They got great talent and unbelievable. So he's built a phenomenal program at Northwest Missouri State. You know, you asked him about recruiting at the Division II level, at the elite recruiting for national championship teams, and one of the things he said really jumped out, and he said, you have to trust your eyes. I mean, you can look at numbers and analytics and all of that. Yep. But what they've done the most, he said, is just trust our eyes. And oftentimes, it leads us to a player that is undervalued by others. But we find immense value in that player. And that player turns into a championship player. Exactly. Now, he, he's got the system down. He's very intelligent. Tremendous communicator. You know, and really shows the kids that he care about him. As a saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care about him. And he gets no, they care about him, they play extra hard for him. He's got a good system. They shoot jumpers, layups, and they share the basketball, move without the ball. Uh, they're not chucking and ducking. They're not being selfish. They're not just worrying about points, they're worrying about winning. First foul on Northwest Missouri State in this half. Lottie step back, three on the way, and that's short. But Jalen Barr plays hard for Flagler, had another offensive rebound, but couldn't put it back in. It's only 6'4", though. He's going against 6'7", 6'8". So it's a little bit outsized. Hodgins, so sweet. And he is the National Player of the Year in Division II. 20 points, four and a half assists. His three-point percentage, 51%. That's unbelievable. Yeah. 
Doesn't take a lot of them, but takes good ones. He knows when to shoot, when to pass. That was Larry Brown's great trait. Shot selection. He knows when to shoot, when to pass. Another pick and pop. You can have a cup of coffee by the time uh, somebody comes near him. Pick and pop. I would switch on that. Body backs in. Again, Barr got a hand on it, but couldn't finish. And a foul in the backcourt, and that is on Lawrence Slim. 8.40 left in a game that hasn't been close for a long time. And a real frustration for Chad Warner. It's, this is like falling behind in football a wishbone team. You know, like falling behind Air Force or, or Navy right? that, that run the option and, then, and, and just eat up clock. You're, when you fall down 15 like they did in the first half to the most efficient offense in the country, that's real trouble. Exactly. He doesn't turn over much. He takes good shots. 54% field goal percentage. It's fabulous. And I should have said triple option, not the uh, Not the wish. You had to be tricked. You had to be tricked. Yeah. Okay. Daryl Royal flashback there. <laughs> a foul at the rim, and it's Diego Bernard. Well, we, we talk so much about offense. Here's their defense tonight. Yeah, Legla only 32 points. Field goal percentage 35 and assists. They only have five assists, so they, every phase of the game, offensive execution, we talked about efficiency. Defensive efficiency has been fabulous, too, so they catch all the boxes. Tremendous team. Bain off the screen. And you got to know that uh, somewhere, the staff at West Texas A&M is watching this closely. They're into the championship game on Saturday, and it looks like Northwest Missouri State is headed that way as well. Yep. Bar down for the block. It's a goal 10. Bearcats, the two seeds, and rolling here, second semifinal, Division II National Championships. They look like the defending champs. This is a 30-point lead for Northwest Missouri State. Warner Ladder is the proud title sponsor of the Naismith Coach of the Year Award. And join us. We'll announce the winner on April 2nd right here on CBS Sports Network. There's your bracket. West Texas A&M is into the championship game. That's a noon Eastern start on CBS on Saturday. And it looks like the Bearcats of Northwest Missouri State will be there as well. Unless they lose a 30-point lead in seven and a half minutes. And I don't see that happening with these guys. Pick and pop, Hawkins, three on the way. And that is going to be, if it is that matchup, a really fun Saturday here in Evansville. 12 noon Central time. Mid-train. 1 o'clock. 11 Central. 11, forgive me. Noon Eastern. Noon Eastern. Noon Eastern. CBS, and that leads <laughs> into a great day and evening of college basketball. Sweet 16. Sweet 16. Yep. Charge. And of course, West Texas A&M trailed almost the entire game. They were down by two, inbounded under their bucket, missed their shot, ball got tipped outside, and beating the buzzer with his first shot of the night, first one to go down was Zach Toussaint with a dramatic three, and that knocked Lincoln Memorial out. Nice job defensively by that young man, Isaiah Jackson, the freshman. That'll be a great game on Saturday. I think we talked briefly on the break that uh, I think it helps West Texas A&M having that day off because they're not as deep, they're smaller, not as physical as uh, Northwest Missouri State. They'll have their hands full once again. I think Northwest Missouri State might be the favorite, but uh, I think it's going to be a great game. Both teams score a lot of points. You're very exciting on CBS. This is the second game in two days. Elite Eight was yesterday. 
semifinals here. But a day, as you mentioned, tomorrow, a day off before the 11 a.m. tip in Evansville on Saturday. And Ben McCollum knows the drill, and that's, you know, in our meeting tomorrow morning, that may be the first question, is how do you, as a, uh, as a coach, approach a championship game? Because he's won two of them in the last three that have been held. Yep. An unbelievable job. But every team is different, every situation is different, every opponent. So, once again, it should be a great game. Both of these teams can really score. A lot of talent. We're very exciting. We're excited for Rich, though. I'm sure the players and the fans of both schools, hopefully our fans watching CBS, will enjoy it. Hawkins misses there. Flagler saves it. Anderson hit a three on the last trip. They're still doing a terrific job on Lottie, though. He has scored a bit here. Yep. He's got a dozen. And Lottie gets up for the tip. Yep. Jacek Lottie. As a coach, Rich, when a game like this, a blowout, the decision has been determined. You just don't want anyone to get hurt on either team. You got a big lead. You don't want anybody to get hurt in the championship. And if you're behind, hey, let's just finish it. Do the best we can. No, no injuries. That's a three. That stays with Flagler. I mean, to, to put this into perspective, I know Flagler is getting beat here, but they had 12 straight losing seasons until this season. And this season they went 18 and two. They beat two division one teams. They won at North Florida, beat Central Michigan. Great year. Chad Warner's got to be very proud of the Saints. And <clears throat> they're proud of him. Got a tremendous job. They're going to keep getting better and better. Beautiful campus. And, uh, great university. So, tough night tonight going against this juggernaut, but uh, got a lot to look forward to. We've been previewing players in, in the night, in our first game and our second game, and we'll you know, get to know the player. One of the questions is, what did you do during the lockdown to stay in shape? And a lot of the Flagler players, you know, where did you get your workouts? Some, you know, for some schools it was in the snow, in a park. Uh, for a lot of the Flagler players, it was on the beach <laughs> in St. Augustine. That's not bad. No. It's right near Jacksonville, right? Rich, you know, Florida, better than I. One official had charge. One official had block. Baseline official had his hand behind his head for charge. But I think the block is going to stand. I think he just slid his feet at the last. Look at the official. He had, he, he had the hand behind the head, then he kind of just kind of casually dropped, dropped it. Yeah. Tough call, that block charge. Oh, without question. Always has been, and, always will be. And what makes it even tougher is the circle, right? Because yep. officials oftentimes have to check the feet while the play is happening in real time. Exactly. I'm the head coach now, four and a half to go, you're up 30. I'm taking Hawkins out of the game, 33. Hudson, the national player of the year, you don't want it. some fluke injury. It's over, it's over, because he went by one of 30. That's a good point. I always did that. <clears throat> Converse, if you're way behind, you know, you, but. Hudgens, national player of the year, drops in at three. He only shoots when he needs to. You know, he's got 13 tonight. Time out. Here come the reserves when we get back 70 to 37 Northwest Missouri State. This has been a blowout from the opening tips 70 to 37. And the defense, along with the offense, has been awesome. Tremendous. They get good hands. They, they strip you of the ball on the way up. They're active. They get a lot of deflections. They get help on D. They don't foul. Very intelligent defensive team. Quick hands. Goes to the basket. Hawkins doesn't give up on a play. Blocks a shot. They give up 66 points a game, which is outstanding. 
Right now, Lagla only has 37, who's a terrific team. So. Off the bench. Daniel Abreu is in, Derek Lang is in, Isaiah Jackson in for Northwest Missouri State. And that one off of Abreu's foot. Away we go, we'll be back 70 to 37. This is looking like Northwest Missouri State into the finals. One of the best Division II players in the country, Ryan Hawkins tonight, turns in a double-double, 20 points, 11 rebounds. The guy that is the player of the year, Trevor Hudgens, in all of Division II basketball, and Hudgens, a big night tonight. <laughs> Nicely out of the timeout. He said play, it's Metzger. Reserves in. For the Bearcats, guys getting a chance to get some run in this national semifinal game. Mitch Muscari is in. Muscari. And with Isaiah Jackson in that backcourt. Daniel Abreu with it now, and his three is on the way. Good. The freshman out of Springfield. And that was Jackson who's done a really nice job. He and Bernard have had the assignment of trying to shut down one of the best scorers in Division II, Jacek Lottie. Yep. Lottie, a little stop and go dribble, turns the corner, tries to move one hand. Jackson got him in the back as <clears throat> he went in, got the ball, but also hit him. So hit him in the head, Rich, you know. If, if we're gonna <laughs> if we're gonna preview Saturday's game. Yep. I, I want your perspective here because West Texas A&M as Metzger sits down, the senior out of St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Plantation, Florida. I see Fort Lauderdale, Florida is where St. Thomas Aquinas is. Plantation, Florida, right nearby. But the guards, I mean, the, the West Texas A&M is driven by their guards. Quay Grant and JoJo Murray combined for 46 points a game. How do you see them projected against Northwest Missouri State? Should be a great game. Northwest Missouri State has the size and the strength, the physicality, as we saw in the first game. But uh, as the same. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. So these West Texas A&M's got a big heart. They play hard. I think it's a, a toss-up. I'd give a slight edge to Northwest Missouri State because of their size, their physicality, and experience. Some of these guys were there when they won the title in uh, 2019. So uh, I think it's going to be a great game, very close. The quickness of the guards against the, the balance scoring. Northwest, Story, Northwest Missouri State has scoring from all five positions. Uh, what about the size differential? Because Northwest Missouri State, you know, Hawkins is 6'7", yep. Waters is 6'6", Dreamer is 6'7", yep. and West Texas A&M starts one player over 6'1". Yeah, a big advantage, certainly, for Northwest Missouri State. They're big, they're physical, <clears throat> but I think a tremendous break for, uh, you know, for uh, Texas A&M, for uh, West Texas A&M is that day off. They'll get a day off to between the rest of them because they don't have the depth or the size or the strength of Northwest Missouri State. So I think that helps a lot. <clears throat> uh, but we'll see. I, I, I couldn't get over the way that West Texas A&M got to the rim. Rich, you know, little guys, six foot, they use their body and they get to the rim. Now, can they get to the rim uh, against Northwest Missouri State? I don't know. It's going to be more difficult because of the size and physicality of the Bearcats. And Lottie is a different player than Murray and Grant, he is, uh, he's not, certainly not as strong in the, in the upper body. Right. Doesn't get as many points in, in, you know, leaning in on, as you just described, where the smaller guards of, of West Texas A&M get some points. They've done a terrific job on Lottie here tonight. He hasn't had much help. No, he hasn't. He hasn't. He has. Tremendous player, but he didn't get much help. But, A personal 
Yeah, this was a, this a tough night for Marcus Henderson. He's a sophomore. He'll, he'll have another run at it next year. But he transferred from Evansville, so this is a, a real nice opportunity to come back home. Certainly the win last night in the Elite Eight was thrilling in front of uh, friends and family. But Chad Warner wants to get some guys in the game, just get a chance to play in a national semifinal. Give a little hug and reward to Lottie, who had a tremendous season. Now always, always hard when it ends, especially in, in lopsided fashion. That's an offensive foul. Henderson and Lottie, who have been uh, dynamite this year, who have helped turn this program around from 12 consecutive losing seasons to the national semifinal. That's a, such a gigantic jump. Change the culture. Not only change it, spread the pass. Having a, a great season. Get to the national semifinal. Breakaway layup. Jerron Richmond, a senior out of Hamilton, Missouri. It's a nice moment for Richmond. Going to the hoop and remember that forever. It's going to be fun on Saturday, Rich. We're going to have a good time. Yeah, on Saturday on CBS, again, noon Eastern, 11 Central Time in Evansville is central time, although most of Indiana is on the eastern time zone. Here in, uh, what, southwest Indiana, there are pockets of counties that are in central time. That's a nice moment for Jack Webster out of Mount Dora, Florida. And Northwest Missouri is going to get a, a substitute, substitute into the game. Jojo Castronovo checking out. Tim Thomas with a rebound. <laughs> this is Thomas. He said, you know what? I've been waiting all, all season for this. I'm pulling one from uh, 28. When a dad shoot, air it out. That's why I got a scoreboard. Limited amount of fans able to travel, but those that have traveled have made some noise. They've enjoyed their time. And their Bearcats are going to the championship game for the third time in the last four NCAA tournaments. An impressive win in all phases of the game. 77 46. Ben McCollum and the Bearcats. Great win for the Bearcats and a wonderful season for Flagler. The 12 straight losing seasons. Great year, but they just outclassed tonight. 77 46 is the final. This one felt like it was never in doubt from the very start. And a tough finish for Jacek Lottie, one of the best players in the country. Seventh in the nation in scoring. He didn't get much help tonight. Lottie would finish with 15 points. An Elite Eight win last night, but knocked out in the national semis. And the Saturday matchup is set. West Texas A&M and Northwest Missouri State. That is our game on CBS. Pete and I will be here on Saturday, noon Eastern, 11 o'clock local here in Evansville. Another guy who will be there is Ryan Haas, and he joins us now. Ryan, congratulations on what was a, just an impressive team win for you guys tonight. Thank you, thank you.
What, uh, you know, look, you guys are rolling right now. What is it uh, about this time of year that your program seems to step up and thrive in? What, what are the, the tangibles and the intangibles that make it happen? Um, you know, our offense is starting to click, and that's something uh, that's an intangible that we work on all year. Um, and it's starting to peak at the right time this year. The ball's moving free and effortlessly. Uh, and then we're starting to guard the ball defensively, putting in that work. We're starting to get comfortable with our coverages. Uh, and it's, we're starting to see the results this year. Ryan, you had a great game, a double-double. But how about the contribution from Diego Bernard, who doesn't quite get the publicity that uh, you and Ryan Hawkins, uh, you and Trevor Hudgens get? You know, uh, what about his contribution? Oh, Diego's attitude and energy that he brings every single day is unmatched. Um, you know, he kind of puts that fire in this team, and when he gets going, man, it's easy to bring that energy with him. Uh, you know, he does not get near enough credit for the stuff that he creates offensively with his athleticism and his cutting. And you saw tonight defensively just how dangerous he is. Are you guys aware of the offensive efficiency numbers? Is that something that you guys really track it and pay attention to in, in practice and, and in and out of games? Uh, we don't really necessarily track it or pay attention to it, but uh, we definitely uh, try to get the best shot that we can offensively. Um, you know, that just comes from playing the right way, playing uh, together and playing team basketball and getting the best shot possible every possession. Ryan, uh, you guys won a ton of games and uh, have a lot of talent. What do you like best about this team besides winning? Uh, just the amount of fun that we have. It's just such a fun group. Uh, there's never a dull day. Uh, you know, if you have a bad day outside of basketball, you get a flush it and go into the locker room and you're greeted by your best friends every day. And uh, just the camaraderie that we have as a group is unmatched. I think your best friends are going to be pretty happy to see you tomorrow at practice. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> a Saturday championship matchup for you and West Texas A&M. Uh, Ryan Hawkins, congratulations to your Bearcats on the win tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Good luck. Thank you. 77-46, the final. And the final in the championship game on Saturday, noon Eastern on CBS, West Texas A&M and Northwest Missouri State. For Pete Gillen, our entire CBS Sports crew, I'm Rich Waltz. So long from Evansville. This, a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Being a champion 